Welcome to Tell You Later, the show where you learn so little about so much and vice versa. Sincere thanks to all those who support us on Patreon. See the full list at the end of the show. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute. Nonetheless, the melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Because it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not. We haven't got a title song for this show. Oops. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of Tell You Later. I'm Katie Lee, your host for today. Well, host most of the time. Anyway, I'm here today, and welcome, welcome, welcome. First of all, a big shout out to our patrons. Patrons, you know who you are. We love you. Your name's in the credits. You help us get this show going, and uh, super excited. Actually, I just got off a Zoom call with our top-tier patrons, and that was super fun, and they had lots of ideas for season four. And I also want to make sure, in case you didn't notice, I'm wearing a Tell You Later shirt that's available at MerchYouLater.com along with things like super cool mugs, stickers, bags, hats. Oh, I'm not wearing my hat, but that's okay because I'm probably going to be taking my glasses on and off today and that'll just get in the way. So today, I want you to know it is show and tell. You notice I don't have a guest. I don't think there's anybody hiding around here because my guests are my friends and my playthings today. So it's show and tell, it's just me by myself. It's my kind of like my first solo show, so bear with me. But I thought it would be fun if I shared some of my toys and products and things in my collectible personal museum uh, from my career, which has spanned about 42 years. So I've collected some things and oh Actually, there I think there's some stuff on the wall. We didn't even get down I'm gonna send the crew of one over to the wall behind me and get down some some fan art So people have given me things over the years. I've bought stuff I've got some stuff from shows and I thought you guys might like to see so I am going to start out with something super cool that a fan of mine sent. Some of you may know I worked on Dungeons and Dragons cartoon show for quite a while. And well, actually here crew one's just handing me this. I might as well show you. This is a fan in Michigan. Actually drew this for me. Crew one, can you tell me if this is showing up on camera? So this will kind of give you an overview. It's so sweet. Somebody, actually, I posted a picture of myself at a bathroom, I think, in the airport. And um, he's helping me, Crew One's helping me hold this. And so a fan, and I can't, did he sign his name? From Michigan. Oh, he wrote something in the corner, and I can't think of his name right now. But I will find his name and put it in the mentionables afterwards. Anyway, he pencil drew all these characters for me and gave it to me when we were at a Comic-Con in Michigan. There's me. That's supposed to be Connie Kendall and Han Solo and Little Miss Chatterbox and oh, uh, I think this is his name's Noe from a, a anime. My Little Pony, Baby Rolf, Sunny Gummy, Honker Muddlefoot, uh, a Sailor from Sailor Moon, Sailor Stars, that Sailor Iron Mouse, that's Alex from Totally Spies, and that is Sojourner, I believe, from um, Space Racers. Anyway, 
So this hangs on my wall. So that's a good little overview. I'll share that with you. That's pretty amazing that somebody, I'll show you some more fan art in a bit. So speaking of Sheila from Dungeons and Dragons, who was in that picture, another friend of mine, Lewis, sent me this. Thanks, Lewis, as a present. And this is very, very special. This is a Dungeons and Dragons from Iron Studios, figures sold separately. I'm gonna unbox it for you here. It's a, from a diorama series, so I guess some people collect all of them, but I was Sheila's voice. Sheila, I don't even know her, her last name, but she's famous for saying, Bobby, look out! That's her little brother, Bobby. Whoops, so I'm opening this upside down, which is really terrible. Here's the base, and here's Sheila. She's all bundled up. And then you put her in here. I have her put away safely because I don't trust myself. Um, let me get this. So here's Sheila, and she has she has a hood. See, she disappears, and then she has her little sword thing and a shield thing. So that is my Sheila artwork. I'm gonna can that too. But there's another company. I did an unboxing a while back. Um, they're called Wizards. And they made a whole bunch of like keychain things and sent me a bunch. And this is Sheila as a keychain or whatever you wanna hang her from, a little dongle and she hangs in my studio with me so I keep her in there she keeps me company so that's uh, some of my Dungeons and Dragons stuff um, let's move on to let me show you actually my first piece of artwork now this is from my very very first cartoon series can you see this crew of one yes and I played, um, goodness gracious, what's her name? Peggy, Peggy. Neil Ross played my brother. It's a show called Pandemonium. This panda, there were three pandas. Algernon was this one. And I think that was Jesse White, who was the Maytag repairman. But this is where I met Walker Edmiston, who played one of the other pandas. And this is a, a cell, actual cell, with paper behind it. And I had everybody sign it. But back in those days, I didn't know that if you didn't hang things properly and the sun got on them, everything would fade. So you can't see the cast members' signatures, but there's Neil Ross and, uh, Oh gosh, who else might you guys know? I don't know, but you all know Neil. He's pretty famous for Transformers and stuff. Tell them what a cell is. A what? cell. So before there were computers, there were doing cartoons on cells. And that they hand painted them. This is actually hand painted. And they would paint the art and put different backgrounds and shoot pictures and that's how animation was made and if you want to know more I could probably tell you later if I get an animator on the show or you can look it up so this is an original piece of artwork hand painted that I, I framed from my first animated series where I was a regular Thank you so much to all you patrons who help us out there. We really appreciate your support. Thank you, everybody who's buying merch on Merchalator. Go to my website, katielee.com, and see there's all kinds of cool stuff. And you can see it there or on Merchalator.com. And also, those who listen on Anchor, I want to shout out to you guys because I know there's a bazillion of you out there who listen and really appreciate you, too. <laughs> Uh, but speaking of cells, guess what? I have another one. Do -do -do -do. Some of you might recognize this little guy. This is Honker Muddlefoot from Darkwing Duck. And this also is, it. see they're numbered. You know when they're original, cause they get, oh, here was little kazoo action. <laughs> yeah. So they number the cells so the people, I guess, who are shooting it know how to put them in order. 
So this is from an episode, so you can see the backgrounds there, but they might overlay another character cell on top of this one when they're shooting the animation. So this is Honker, but wait, there's more Honker stuff. Hold it, hold it, hold it. So some people, they go to cons and they find these for me. This is a Honker muddle foot. There's Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. Oh, I actually have a I have a Darkwing Duck graphic novel written by Aaron Sparrow and illustrated by Tad Stones. And that's on my bookshelf. I forgot to get that down. But here's Honker Muddlefoot Intelligence Report. Honker Muddlefoot, boy genius, honor student. Has photographic memory, is a walking encyclopedia. Let me triple check that just to be sure, sir. So that's how Hugger talks. He's a pint-sized super braid and Gosselin's best friend. Drake Mallard's next door neighbor, and he's the only outsider entrusted with Darkwing Duck's secret identity. Because as we all know, Darkwing is Mr. Mallard, Gosselin's dad, who was played by Jim Cummings. He was Darkwing Duck. He also played Honker's dad, Herb Muddlefoot. So there's one of those. I have another little honker guy. Hmm, I don't know where he is, but... Oh, here's some more fan art to Katie Lee honker. Somebody gave me this. Their names are on the back, but I, I framed it because I thought it was really sweet. I really do cherish the fan art that people give me, and I'm not even sure what convention this was from. Oh, there's a name. Wait a minute. It slid down. Her oh, Harriet gave me this. Harriet Wong. You guys, check Harriet out on Instagram or Facebook. She is an amazing artist, and she comes to a lot of the conventions. She's a wonderful artist. So, Harriet, shout out to you. Just a sweet person, and I framed your artwork. However, <laughs> le pièce de résistance. Okay, so after we finished shooting Darkwing Duck, our director, Ginny McSwain, heard from the Disney people and she said, we have the maquettes from uh, Darkwing, which they use to do the artwork when they draw. They're 3D models that people make out of like clay. So this is my honker. I'll take them out, you can see them. So she's asked us if we wanted to buy our characters. So when the artists are drawing, they look at their characters from all angles and somehow that helps them draw. Now Honker's foot got broken, but crew of one fixed it. Oh, it's glued down. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I guess I, I wanted to protect him for good. I didn't know he was glued to the base. But this is my little honker, and they let us purchase them for a pretty stiff price, I must say. But you know what? It's pretty cool. There was only one of a kind, so I have that. So that is my honker. I shouldn't say that. Now everybody's going to try to find where the studio is and come get it. I'm going to hand this to the crew of one so we can put that back. Okay, so that was a fun show. Now... Uh, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Uh, next we have, I'm gonna show this. This makes noise. This is, I worked on a show called Yokai Watch, and guess what? This is an actual Yokai Watch. So I did a lot about, I don't know, 50 voices for these things here. It, it <laughs> makes that noise. But then you, what you do, see that they're like pogs. They come into the watch. And then let's see if it works. I haven't played with this. I just mainly sits on my shelf and makes noise. I, let's see if I can find one of the characters that I did. Um, I don't know, but I'll show you how it works here. You can't see what I'm looking at. Um, well, here's Joey to Oreo's character. Let's see. You stick it in here. Somehow. How do you get it in there? Oh. 
It makes the same sound. Well, I don't know. I've never actually played with it. All right, well, that's stuck, but that's a yokai watch, and that's part of my collection, and it makes noise. So they made all different characters and all these little guys, and I think you can actually hear them talk. Maybe we'll figure it out later. Yeah. All right, so let's put this away. Isn't this fun? Show and tell! Woohoo! I used to like show and tell in school. All right, so there's my yokai watch. Had a yokai watch pen, too. I think it's over with my pens. Uh, okay. Other old fun stuff. Baby Rolf. Do, 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 do. I'm not singing the right tune, so I can't get sued. Baby Rolf. This is my little baby Rolf. He's a little stuffed. I think he's got bean bags in him. Because I did Rolf the dog's voice on the Muppet Babies. And that's what he sounded like. Um, but I have a big one, too. Da -da -da. Remember they sang in the movie? So these were made for the movie, and I love my baby Rolf, because he's far out. Yeah, cool. Hey, I did your voice. You did? Yeah, I did. I really did. Oh, really? That's far out. Okay. So there's my Rolfies. Let me put them here. Let's see. I don't know if you can see them. But when we did the Muppet Babies, we also recorded a few record albums. We recorded songs for all the show. And then we did longer versions for the record album. So here's one. Rocket to the Stars. And... What's a record album? What's a record album? Here's a record album. It's a long playing album. This is what we used to read before we had iPhones and Facebook and things to scroll through. My reading material as a child growing up was mainly record albums and cereal boxes. So this has, they actually used to print the lyrics. Here's the lyrics to all the songs. So you can listen and sing along. And this is what the album looks like. And it plays Jim Henson's Muppet Babies, Rocket to the Stars, Columbia. And that was pretty fun, I have to say. Um, <laughs> when I found out we were recording songs, and I'm not a singer, but Rusie Taylor was a great singer. Lori O'Brien could sing. Frank Walker could sing. Um, Greg Berg and me and Howie Mandel were not the greatest singers. And we went to the studio in my first session. I was really scared, nervous. And it was a real, like music recording studio right and we had headphones i don't usually work with headphones but they gave us headphones and i felt like you know i don't know jackson brown <laughs> I don't know. you don't even know who that is but anybody famous rock person so i'm wearing them and i couldn't i really couldn't um i don't know i guess i was nervous because i'm not a great singer and trying to make sure that i sounded like rolf and uh, my wonderful director Hank Soroyan said, you want a beer? And went and got me a beer so I could relax. And after we recorded the first few songs, I think um, he sent me to a singing teacher, Laura Hart, who taught me that uh, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And I found that I could sing better with a French accent than I could in English. So if you notice when you talk sometimes like something different, you make different sounds that you don't make when you are speaking your own language. So doing Rolf and singing like Rolf to make some of the sounds come out better, we would do all kinds of things. And she was a wonderful, wonderful coach. So we had rock. Was that Rocket to the Stars? Yeah, but also Rocket to the Stars when CDs came out, came out on CD. Muppet Babies Rocket to the Stars so is available somewhere on an LP or a CD. And I've never opened this one or, or played it. So I have this. This was $10 back in the day of that. I also have from Muppet Babies <laughs> so many fun memories, that's for sure. I have a another cell. And here's baby Rolf locked in a cell. <laughs> that's a joke. 
Um, and I have my friends autograph this for me. We also have, I have a lot of scripts that usually at the end of episodes, or, sorry, at the end of a show, at the end of your recording season, we usually take the last script and ask our friends to autograph it. So I've got baby Fozzie and Frank Walker and Rusi and Dave Coulier, who took over for Howie Mandel. In case you didn't know that, he did um, Bunsen, Honeydew, and Animal. Howie was Animal originally, and Skeeter. But then when Howie left, Frank started doing Skeeter's voice, and Dave Coulier did Animal, and Piggy, Lori O'Brien, and Hank. What did he say? He loved me. Oh, you're special to me. Guys, every Valentine's Day, I post a song from the Muppet Babies called You're Special to Me. I'll probably cry just talking about it because it was, <sighs> the writers, we had diff different writers and some of them would say, oh, you know, we're so sorry. We only have a couple lines in this episode. And I said, I don't care. I'm just happy to be here, right? And frankly, you get paid the same whether you have one line or a thousand. So always, always grateful. But um, Maya Matisse wrote a script. She was actually one of our production assistants or head of, I mean, she probably had a better title than that. I don't even know. But she wrote the script for Valentine's Day and a song just for me to sing called You're Special to Me, where Baby Rolf would sing to all the other Muppets uh, that he didn't have a lot of talent but he could sing and he could sing his feelings and he sang you're special to me and they would there's a great song anyway you can look it up on youtube or one of my posts and on valentine's day i'll probably post it again because you guys out there are all special to me i wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for you what's the fangirl up to this week to find out stay tuned till after the credits So those are my, it might find some more stuff somewhere, but those are my Muppet Babies toys. So guess what? <laughs> Next section, wait, let me take a drink of water from my special tell you later mug. Mm. By the way, a lot of our patrons, our top tier patrons got their mugs this month for supporting us three months in a row and they're super excited and I was glad to hear that and we'll probably share some pictures of them with their mugs. <laughs> their mugs with their mugs. Get it? Mugs with their mugs. Okay. Ba -ba. Hey, guess what? Did you know I was on this show, My Little Pony? I was. And in the movie, this is an album, it's never been opened, from My Little Pony, the original movie soundtrack. Because I guess there's lots of songs in here. I don't know. Since I've never played it, I can't actually tell you. But I did Fizzy's voice. I think that's Fizzy. I don't know how they got wings. But anyway, um, I was Fizzy and Baby Sundance in the movie. Let me see. But you know who else was in the movie? Danny DeVito, Madeline Kahn, Cloris Leachman, Rhea Perlman, and Tony Randall. However, I don't remember. I never actually worked with them because they're superstars and they came in by themselves. But we made the movie and then we made the TV show. So what is on this album anyway? It's just soundtrack. It doesn't, I guess I'd have to open it to find out. And maybe we'll never know. Anyway, so now I actually got invited. Oh, here's my bucket. I got my bucket. Here's the movie. No, no. This is from the complete series, My Little Pony, the series where I probably voiced about 12 ponies. Maybe more, because they kept in inventing more toys to sell. So we were flutter ponies, and we were seahorse ponies, and we were baby seahorse ponies, and we were baby ponies, and all kinds of ponies, unicorn ponies. So we'd always have to come up with a whole bunch of names and 
Ginny McSwain, shout out to her. She was our director on that show too. We called her the Pony Master. So this is a collection. Why did I get this collection? Well, of course I wanted to see the episodes. Um, but also I got them because I was invited to, did you know there's a My Little Pony convention? They had a My Little Pony convention with fans of My Little Pony who collect ponies. It was in Illinois and they gave me a My Little Pony. So it says, My Little Pony Hall of Fame 2016. Hello. Anyway, My Little Pony, isn't this cool? I got an award. So we went to the pony convention, which was super fun. I got that. And while I was there, I went pony shopping because these are all the ponies I could identify that I had done voices for. Don't ask me their names, but I will show them. If you know who they are, you can put them in the comments below. This is a, I don't know, did they say their names on their tushies or anything? I don't, I knew who they were at the time because I was looking at their pictures. But here's another, this is, I'm pretty sure this is fizzy. This has got, she's got a unicorn, see? And ice cream cones. If anybody knows who they are, this one's got like sparkles on her tush. Um, this is a little pony. It is my little pony, my little little pony. Uh, here's one. This one has like a bib on her rear end. This one is a unicorn with a star. I really did know who, oh look, there's Sunny Gummy, another Sunny. I knew there was one hiding in the pony box. Maybe she wants to go for a ride. Do, 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 do. Hey, I want to go for, oh, we didn't do Sunny Gummy yet. She's got to go in the pile. I haven't gotten to the gummy bears yet. Okay, never mind. Um, so this baby, uh, Sundance, I think. No, she's got a bib, so baby somebody or other. And this one, somebody actually wrote on this one. There's another unicorn, wings and hearts. Hearts with wings on it. If anybody knows who that is. Oh, here's, oh, I have two of these. Two of these, I don't know how I got two of those. I got, this one has ice cream cones. But this is the mom, I, or not the, I don't know if they're the mom or the big sister of this one. See, this one has pink hair. I think. Anyway, okay, so I got a lot of ponies. There's another one with bright yellow hair and sunglasses, it looks like. That's a groovy pony. Here's one with maple leaves on her. Oh, I think that might be lickety split. I don't know. Here's another one with hearts and wings, but not a unicorn. Here's a big one. Oh, this is pretty with flowers. I know I did all these voices, but please, I could look at the tags and probably, this is baby milkweed. Milkweed? All right, well, there you go. Baby milkweed, I don't know what she talks like, but it's probably something like that. Something like that, pony. Fizzy, I think this Fizzy said, um, I don't know. Uh, what does a little pony have to do to get noticed around here? It sounds a little bit like Sunny. Here's another uh, one with a rocking horse. Baby rock, tumbleweed. Baby tumbleweed. Well, I could have read their tags. This one also has like a circle with hearts, like this one and the very last one. And I keep these guys. This one is a mittens, little mittens on her tush. Anyway, on her flank. I don't know what you call pony parts. Hello. How are you? Oh, it's really nice to see you. Hey, want to play? Okay. Want to come into my play box? Okay, let's do that. Ooh. All right, everybody, ponies back in the box. Actually, the ponies go on a shelf. I have a big bookshelf wall, and I have them all lined up on there, and they look at me at night, and I go to sleep, and they wish me happy pony dreams. So, there are my ponies. So, since I kind of uh, broke the, the ice, I don't know if this is a good spot for a commercial break or not, but I'm going to take a sip of water. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 
I mentioned this one who got lost in the pony box. This is Sunny Gummy. Sunny Gummy from the Gummy Bears. Look how different we look. Hey, are you my giant cousin? Yes, I am your giant Sunny Gummy cousin from another country. Okay, well, that's fine. We can still be, look how different these two guys look. However, they are both Sunny Gummy and they were sold as Sunny Gummy. Oh, you know what? I found my commercial I did for cereal with Sunny Gummy. So I'm going to make sure it gets on this episode. Crew of One, make a note of that. Um, now that we have YouTube, you can find things from the 80s and 90s and like earlier that we could never see before. So I actually did a commercial for Fruit Loops. I might have shared it. I don't know. Fruit Loops. And basically, I think all I said was, no! And that was a good payday, I have to say. So here's two little Sunny Gummy figures, but wait, there's more! This one I really like, because she's really happy, and she's dancing with flowers. And she had her brother, Cubby, who was kind of annoying. Um, but that's what Sunny Gummy sounds like. Here's another one where she's a little shorter and fatter, playing a a um, stringed instrument kind of looks like a lute from applause toys different companies you know they license the rights to make these this is a collectible figurine oh and it came with a store oh story booklet guess what this is a story booklet i haven't read the story because i haven't opened it up so let me put this over here oh, all you sunny gummies, go over here. Do, 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 do. They're gonna have a sunny me gummy, sunny gummy tea party over there. This is really cool because just a few years ago they came out with sunny gummy Funko Pop, and I signed a bunch of them, but I got to keep one. And this is actually Funko Pop. They make a lot of different. I always wanted to be a pop. I really did. So this is a dream come true. And and she's pretty cute because she just looks like a Funko Pop. Um, Sunny Gummy, she's she's one of my favorites. And anyway, what's cool is they, they um, vaulted this one, which means they put out a whole bunch and then they locked up a whole bunch. So it's probably, I guess, going to be worth more or sell for more in the future. I do believe if you go to celebworks.com, C-E-L-E-B-W-O-R-X.com, uh, they have a store now. Those are my, my convention agents who I love very dearly, Neri and Chris. They're great people. And they have a store online with these pops that I have autographed. If anybody's interested in one, go to celebworks.com. Hey, but speaking of cells, here's another one. You can see the ink and paint. Mainly the ink faded. That's what happens because I didn't know you weren't supposed to hang these up where sunlight gets on them. But this is Sunny and Cubby. That was Noelle North. She did Cubby's voice. And this was from one of our last sessions. I guess probably the last one. That was a great show. Um, just, you've heard me talk about it. Will was on it with me. He played the Ogres and he played Unwin and Bill Scott and June Foray, Rocky and Bullwinkle were on the show. Paul Winchell was on the show. He played Zummy and then uh, eventually uh, Jim Cummings took over that role. Lorenzo Music was Tummy Gummy. And I have Paul Winchell's autograph on here, Corey Burton's, Michael Rye, um, who, uh, Corey, uh, Lorenzo Music. Actually, this must not have been the end because Lorenzo signed it. Maybe it was the end of the first season. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, June Ferre, Will, and Jim Magon, who was our director and creator. And so this is really special, even though you can barely see it anymore because it's faded. It hangs on my wall anyway, because I have it. Now, somebody named Heather gave me this. I think 
Pearl one, I think we were in Santa Fe. I think this came from the Santa Fe Comic Con and somebody drew this, painted it. I think it looks like it's, I don't know if it's markers. I don't know how people do this. Just shout out to all you artists out there, amazing. And she drew this and gave it to me for a present. So I cherish this, Sunny Gummy. All right, and I think her hair looks just fine in this picture, don't you? I do, okay. So thank you, Crew of One, for that. Oh, oh, you've got your new uh, Tell You Later tote bag. Cute? I love yeah, it. Did that. you get that at Merchulator? I sure did. Merchulator.com. It's so cute. It, look, super tell cute. Tell Ya Later bag, and That's it's got awesome. everything in it. Do I they got... have hats? Moving right along. I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's my little walk down memory lane. I worked a few years on, this is, now we're into some toys. Now you can't hear this. This guy is named Lingufino. We did many, many scripts to, to like teach English or in English. You put these cartridges in him and there's books and it's a product made in Germany and I haven't gotten the English version yet, but they sent me the toy and that's what he looks like. So if anybody knows anything about Lingofino, Lingofino and where you can get it in English, let me know. That would be great. Oh, um, I'll let me show you this. Dumbo Circus was, um, I told you Pandemonium was my first series and then Dumbo Circus was on the Disney Channel and that's where I worked with Walker Edmiston and Jim Cummings, where I met him, Will Ryan, because uh, I think that's the first series Will and I did together. Uh, Phil Barron um, helped with songs. Will wrote songs and scripts. Anyway, Jim Cummings, I believe, gave me this because somebody gave it to him and he thought I might like it. Now, it's not artwork from the show. I'll show it to you but it's a, a painting and you can see it's some kind of, I don't know if this is Disney artwork or where it came from, but you can see here in the corner, it says there's a like a poster from Dumbo Circus. And Jimmy gave me that as a gift, which is very sweet. So there, and that hangs up in my house. Let's look at another toy. How about another toy? Wanna hear another toy? This. Red Rover, Red Rover, Red Rover. Send a blue bone over. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. I worked at Mattel. I don't own one of these. They made a talking Barbie dream house. I didn't really know Chris at the time, but I guess she did Barbie's voice, Chris Anthony Lansdowne, and I got to do Skipper's voice. So when you put the the dolls in or somewhere they talked in the dream house well after that they made this toy called red rover so we did the toy what's really cool is i also got to do the commercial maybe we can find the commercial this is a fun toy and actually what makes it even more fun is now we have a grandson and we've actually played this with him so <clears throat> this is red rover maybe we'll have a link we can put the commercial in um, anyway, this is where the bones go. Here's a bone. You can turn it, you turn it on on the It's a great bone finding day, so let's get ready to play. Pet it's my a nose, one time for the puppy color game. Pet my nose, two times for the big dog challenge. Pet my nose, two times for the big dog challenge. Let's see. Big dog challenge. There you go, big dog challenge. Now scatter the bones all around, white up so they can be found. Pet my nose when you're ready to play. All right, let's see what he wants. Red Rover, Red Rover, bring a letter D. Bone over. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick a bone in his mouth. Uh-oh, not that bone, my friend. Put it back right side up and try again. So, yes, because I put a C in his woof, mouth. Woof, oh, he's spark. Thank you. Do you want me to teach you a, a, a voiceover trick for sounding like you're a dog panting? 
You rub your nose like that and it sounds like him. So I'm gonna put my bone back. Turned him off. It's a fun, fun game and we finally got to play it. So that's why he's out of the box. Um, let me get some more water. Hmm. We're coming to the end of my collectibles. So I worked on a show called The Mr. Men Show. And here are the characters that I played. For some reason, they had these cards for the characters. And uh, I was Little Miss Chatterbox, and she talked a lot like this, and she never really stopped. She just talked really, really fast all the time and talked like that. I was Little Miss Daredevil, who said, Hold on to your patootie! And I was Little Miss Helpful, just trying to be helpful. She was always trying to be helpful, but she wasn't that helpful. Well, you know, I do what I can. Okay, so that are those are the three characters I did on the Mr. Men show, which was really fun. I got to work with uh, some great people. Um, Joey DeOria, Rick Zeef, who I've done other projects with. Rick, he's a great guy, and... Uh, um, oh boy, now I'm at, Phil Lawler was actually on that show too, and Allison Packard was where I met Allison, and she's gone on to do great things. We've actually, a bunch of us have worked on the new Tom and Jerry show together, um, and uh, Richard Epcar, who's directed a bazillion games, anime games, and, and other cartoons, who, after I met him on the Mr. Men show, he's the one that cast me for Star Ocean. Um, what's the name of it? Star Ocean something. It's on my phone. I played Millie Cliet, and he cast me in that, which was really fun. Um, so we all been working together. Once you meet everybody, you start to be friends and then you find you're doing other projects together. Uh, so Allison and I did, well, uh, Space Racers. Um, she wears on Yokai Watch. Anyway, you guys can look up all these names I'm throwing out and name dropping and, and find out who they are. But uh, super fun. Uh, Jeff Stewart, little Mr. Tickle, and Susan Balboni, who was Miss Scary. She was hilarious. Anyway, oh, look. So here we did a toy. This is, this is Little Miss Chatterbox. And, oh, wait. Oh, there's a little... Honker was hiding. A honker was hiding in here to put. I knew there was another little honker. Well, he's a He's very small because he probably got shrunk in a shrunk down machine, like in the Goofy Golf episode. And then here's here's little Miss. Oh, little Miss Helpful. There she is, and little Miss Chatterbox. Other little toys and little Miss Daredevil. So I've got them. 3D and on cards, which is super fun. I should stand them up with the cards behind them. Here's another Yokai Watch, Dealy Bob. But it's in a package, Yokai Watch. So they're all stuffed in here. But let me show you. So Little, little Miss Chatterbox, oh! <laughs> I'll show you what this is in a minute. Um, well, they made these toys, which was great. They had this one, and they had a little you know those little balls, like stuffed things that talk? You throw them at somebody and then they make a noise. So I had a Little Miss Chatterbox that if you threw her or tossed her, she talked. Um, I'll tell you why I don't have that one here in a minute. But you squeeze her hand because she likes to talk. Hello? Is that it? She done? Hi hey, hey. <laughs> She You never know when she's gonna talk. What else did she say? Can we squeeze the other? She's got two cell phones, of course. Hello? Oh. Hello? Hey, Mr. Stubborn, what's new? Hey, Mr. Stubborn, what's new? Mr. Stubborn. What do you mean, why did I call you? You called me. 
<laughs> anyway, I know she's going to keep talking. That's why I'm just waiting to see what... She just like, keeps going. So we keep her wrapped up in plastic on a Bye -bye. shelf. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Probably going to keep talking. Um, so I the little ball, my daughter was in uh, Germany studying photography and I got a little toy of little Miss Chatterbox's little ball and I sent it to her in Germany and of course she was busy being a cool teenager and you know she threw it in the closet but if anybody bumped into it it would start talking like that little Miss Chatterbox so she told me her friend because she had to you know that like a dorm situation and somebody would go or something would fall in the closet and all of a sudden the thing would start talking and they'd yell Laura your mother <laughs> like she couldn't shut her up either um, here's a funny story um, my kids have gone all over the world, but they can't always get away from me. And I have my oldest son, who some of you Odyssey fans may know as Cal from the Novacom series, now lives in Thailand. And when he first moved there, I said, hey, Adam, call this phone number. Because his mother, me, recorded the entire IRS code for Thailand in English for people living there who need to file their taxes. And he could hear me on the recording. And as far as I know, it's still there. And this, I only have one of these, and I don't know if it'll play. I did voices for a series of talking toothbrushes. And shout out to Kevin Kilpatrick. And this one is Brush Buddies Wanda Whiskers. And I don't know if the best, this is, was a long time ago, but you push the button and it talks and gets your kids brushing. It doesn't stop talking for two minutes. So you know you've brushed your teeth for two minutes. I don't know if it'll play. Let's see. Meow. It's time to brush your teeth, right? Meow. So, oh, well, this doesn't talk, but this was Little Miss Helpful. She's just a plush. She's just a plush. She doesn't talk. There's all the cast on the back, but, you know, we got her anyway because it's kind of fun to have a toy based on your character. And then this isn't really a toy. It's like a swag from uh, Rainbow Butterfly Unicorn Kitty, which I'm sure you've all seen on Nickelodeon. And this is just a little kitty ball plaything that's a keychain that I also have in my collectibles. And I think, phew, that is it <laughs> for the toys. Oh, and the games. And if anybody has it out there, I also worked on the Candyland talking toy game. And I was, uh, I think, Princess Lollipop? Lollipop? So if you have that toy, share it in the comments down below. That would be fun to see it. It's a game that talks. Um, Crove one is pointing at something and I'm shaking my head no at him in case that you're wondering why I'm making this face because this show is about toys and games and collectible stuff. Um, actually, I don't care. He wants me to show... Um, I don't know that they do this anymore. This is the Wits End Sampler that they gave away for a while. I don't know how. Just to sh tell people about Adventures in Odyssey. I guess they sold it for $2.99 back in the day. CDs. What's that? He's asking me what's an LP. What's a CD? Nobody listens to CDs anymore, right? Um, what's a CD? Um... So I did the Candyland talking game. I have also done Leapfrog. I never got copies of that. I don't know what uh, Leapfrog is. Oh, in case you're wondering, CD looks like this. Actually, for those of you who crochet, I was on YouTube, as we, as we are wont to do, and found a way to crochet a basket from the bathroom room using a CD. So if you have your old CDs and you want to repurpose them, you can crochet. I'm going to make one and then I'm going to show you guys because I just have, it just looked like very interesting kind of 
loop around the bottom. This becomes the base. Then you make a basket and voila, Christmas presents for everybody, right? Maybe I'll get tired of making scrubulators and, and make those. Anyway, I was before he stuck that in my face, I was trying to remember what other games. Leapfrog, I did some leapfrog toys, but I don't have any copies of those. And there was one other one I was trying to remember. Oh well, I'll have to tell you later. Tell You Later is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. Say, well, there are words to that tune. Sure enough, our Westy, and they go like this. My horse likes accordion music. That's his kind of stuff. Yes, my horse likes accordion music. He just can't get enough. So if you don't like accordion music, I'll sympathize with you. But my horse likes accordion music, so I do too. Look at that, and there's your chin. <gasps> Nathan Hubler! Oh my gosh, you're Nathan Hubler! <gasps> oh my gosh, can I have your autograph, please? Please, uh, please? Sure. Oh, thank you. Uh, what's your name? Jane. Oh, hi, Jane. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Oh, my gosh, this is so exciting. Are you an Odyssey fan? Oh, I'm absolutely an Odyssey fan. I've listened to all the episodes, and I love your hat with the moose mail on it. Yes. <laughs> it's so <Ooh>. wooden. <laughs> That's great. Did you know Katie Lee and I are close personal friends? I didn't. Katie's yeah. great, isn't she? Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, and we, uh, we, uh, she let me be on the Tell You Later show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we went to Disneyland together. Oh, you went to Disney? Yeah, we went to Disney, oh, and then fun. yeah, and then and then she and Kimmy were at a picnic, and I and I saw them there, so I also got to meet Kimmy. So they were at a picnic, and they like invited you, or? Well, I, I they were at the picnic, and I I saw them, so I went up and said hi. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, that's like the kind of connection that would only happen in Odyssey.